Hello and welcome to TV Retrospective, where we retrospectively look back at TV. I'm Connor. I'm Kyron. And this week's special guest is Eric. Hey, what's going on? Eric, since you're here, I thought I would ask, uh, what originally got you into Ben 10, whether it be as a kid or just for this rewatch? Well, I used to watch it all the time when I was a kid because I had nothing else to do. And I guess just because I really liked aliens and stuff as a kid, it brought me in a little bit, so that's probably what happened. Fair enough. That's a reasonable response. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I'm still trying. I don't actually know what exactly brought me in as a kid. You probably saw it on TV one point. Probably, and said, hey, I'm yeah. Watch this. <laughs> yeah. Look, look, you're not wrong. It was probably, but like with most things that I tend to really like, I always catch them in like a very weird point in which I'm like, "What the hell is this? I have to watch more." All right. Well, let's get on to so season three is the season that we're covering this episode, and uh, now normally I would go episode by episode, but what happened was, is that for the first two episodes, uh, we were using Stan to watch it, but uh, then Stan removed it, so it came into a bit of a problem, because the way that Stan listed their episodes is different to how the DVD listed its episodes. Yeah. Like, they're mostly in the same order, like the last few episodes are in line, but like, there's a few that switch around. So, for example, on Stan, the first episode was Ben 10,000, where on the DVD, it was Midnight Madness. Yeah. I'm just going to go off the release order, which is the order that Google gave me, and hopefully you can connect up your notes, if you've t taken any, to oh, that. Oh yeah, I should do that. I open my notes. <laughs> <laughs> so, episode one, Ben 10,000. This is my favorite episode of the series. Well, that was quick. Yeah. You say that, Kyron, your favorite episode was season one, episode five. That's pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. I'm just talking in the recording session, not in general. <laughs> Shut up. But yeah, this hands down is my favorite episode. Also, like, I, I like to put it, like, because they're tra so they're just traveling around America for the road trip, but they always keep ending up at Mount Rushmore. Hmm, yeah. yeah. Like, like, I don't really, like, I don't know America's places. I know where Washington Monument is, because that's in Washington. Do you know where Washington <laughs> is? In America? Duh. Duh doy. In a- where? In America? That's a different question. I, I can't answer that. I have no clue. But they just keep ending up there, so like in the background of the beginning of this episode you see it, and I'm like, they're back here again, I guess. I guess, I guess they just really like this spot, huh? I mainly noticed that in the last episode, because they end up in the same spot as in the first episode, I think. Like, the very first. Ah, oh, do they? I'm pretty sure you see the same park ranger, and also it looks near identical. I mean, maybe. We could, because that's the last episode of season three or four. Last episode of season three. Uh, okay, well... Looks like the same as the first episode was... of season one. We'll get to that when we get to yeah, that. Yeah, no, that, that, yeah, that was, that, that, I think that was the same. Maybe you're right, who knows? <laughs> who knows? But, uh, yeah, so... This is the... The intro changed. The intro finally changed. Because of the loss of Ghost Freak. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because, yeah, so Ghost Freak got out of the Omnitrix last season, and in the, he was in the intro. So, because Banta can't transform into it, they replaced him out with uh, Cannonball. And I really like this new intro. I like how it looks, but I can also tell they re-recorded the song because some of the stuff is like slightly different pitches and it really irritates me. I did not notice that at all. I noticed it in the first two seconds of the first episode. Uh, I, I got nothing to compare it to. I, I didn't watch the first two seasons. So I just <laughs> went straight to season three. Oh, uh, no, fair enough. No, but I really like in the intro, so Cannibal does his, like, spinning thing, and then he, like, does his pose, but I like that how it matches up with the audio, it just really, it's just like it hits that, uh, the, the spot in your brain where you're like, yeah, it's cool. I mean, they did that in the first intro as well with Wildmutt's transformation. But Wildmutt wasn't in the first intro. Yeah, it was. I don't remember that. It was in the exact same spot doing the exact same thing as what Cannibal was doing. No, but like, no, but for season one and two... Yeah. Hang on. Wildmutt's transformation was in the intro. Oh, you said Wildmutt. Oh, sorry, yeah. I was thinking of. Did you just uh, think Wildmine? Wild yeah. No. Nah. Yeah, but like, but I, it just, I don't know. Maybe it just, maybe I like Cannonball better than Wildmutt. But like he, I don't. It just, it, it. I don't know. I just like it more. I liked it more. I found it better. They made um, Cannonball a lot better in this season. 
Oh, He's one yeah. of the more common aliens now, and he actually does things other than fall on his ass half the time. Yeah. Like, so, like, the premise of the episode is that Ben and Gwen get taken to the future by future Gwen because Ben is just an alien all the time, and he's he's just in his head being a hero, and he's not, he's not doing the family side of things. Yeah, so Ben is like, whoa, cool, you got like 10,000 aliens, and <laughs> Ben 10,000 is like, I don't want to hang out with my 10-year-old self. He was the worst. <laughs> and just leaves, and I'm like, you yeah, know, nah, fair enough. I don't, I don't know if I'd ha- hang out with my 10-year-old self. Who would want to hang out with their 10-year-old self? I feel like all of us were super cringy at 10 years old. Not much has changed. <laughs> I don't know if I would call myself cringy, but I was just like, well, that's a different. That's different. I'll ask questions, but I'll be like, oh man, this is a different time. But especially at 30, you wouldn't want to hang out with your 10 year old self. Mm. Yeah. Especially with that one where he's like, I have no. Like, uh, he's, like, he's like, I have no time, and he just runs off. But yeah, I just really like this episode. It's got some really cool stuff. There are two main things I like in this episode. The first one seeing the aliens but like they're more matured because when you think about it all of the things ben turns into are those aliens but only like 10 years old so then when you see ben 10,000 turn into them that's them when they're more matured so they have some noticeable difference of what happens when they get older yeah like, he plus had these flame pores off him accelerate looked a lot different he, trying to exce- accelerate years. pretty much all that was different was the fact that you know how like uh, ben has like the white strips of hair on the side yeah. Accelerate just had that on his arms. Yeah, but like oh, his man. head was also a bit more elongated and he was really sleek. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah he was a bit more sharp too. in the design. Mm. I think forearms yeah. had spikes. Or no, like more noticeable forearms ones. didn't have spikes, but he definitely looked older. Yeah. Mm. The and the other like... thing I liked, though, this yeah. is the season where they start to get away with a lot more shit. Because they literally shown Vilgax torn to pieces and like his innards are everywhere. Oh, yeah. yeah. So Dr. goes to revive him. He's just completely torn apart. In my notes, it's like, Ben 10,000 murdered Vilgax. Yeah. <laughs> like, he said, like, he, he, I don't remember what he says exactly, but he's pretty much like, I terminated him. Like, I eliminated him. And you're like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I don't know what happened between young kid Ben 10 and this ki- this guy, but like, at some point, he's like, murder's fine. And you're just like, Jesus. Yeah. But like I love yeah, Doctor Anime being like in an like an ape's body with like his head. I'm like, no, that's that's a fair evolution of the character, and like the the um, the superheroes come back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like the Ultra Squad or whatever. Oh yeah, called. the Galactic Enforcers. Yeah, the Galactic the Galactic Enforcers. But there's like so many like and Vilgax like being built up, and he's got like an even bigger arm than he did before, and you're like, damn. <laughs> This guy yeah. could pick up like forearms and then crush his head in and then slam him into four buildings. <laughs> Unlike before where he could do the exact same but less powerful. Also, my favorite moment from the episode and it's one of the rare moments because you always look for like a like a hell yeah moment like a TV show. And it's the bit where Ben, like young Ben, like they're all like Vilgax is broken out, they're going to attack them and um, Ben 10,000 isn't there. And I think, yeah, Ben gets picked up, and you just hear Grandpa on the flying Ross Buck again. <laughs> Get your claws off my grandson! And this flies, it was so cool! <laughs> I, yeah. I threw my fist into the air, I was like, fuck yeah! <laughs> I love this, I was like, yes! Ah, oh, the best moment of the series! The Ross yeah. Bucket is the best car. <laughs> it is really good. And then they have all these new aliens that, well, not all these new ones, but a few new ones that um, Ben 10,000 has. I think there are only like two. Yeah, because you have like the... I think it's the... You had that frost guy at the end. Because he like yeah. he freezes Vilgax in the water. And then he has the... Some the, acid spitting guy. Yeah, the acid spitting guy. Which, I would like to say, both appear in Ultimate Alien. I thought the ice skated. I don't remember the acid one. I, I was watching the intro for Ultimate Alien for some reason. And... They they both appear in the intro because I, I remember the ice guy was but yeah and I'm like oh that's just cool because it's like the, like the continuity between all four shows works like it's not always the best like sometimes there's a few retcons here and there but like there are just a few things you would never expect that and we'll cover this in a like next season but like there's a few things you're like 
Oh, that's they actually added that in. That's really cool, especially since it's a feature episode. I really like the lesson of this like thing of being like, if, like just young Ben teaching him going for the the entire series. I've been taking notes, being every time I've been like, oh, Ben's the hero. Ben is the hero of this episode. I always liked that because it's like, hey, you don't have to turn to an alien to be a hero. You can just be a guy. You can just do it. And then for this premise being like, even though you have like ten thousand aliens, you have so many abilities, sometimes just being you will get the job done. And also, Ben ten thousand looks awesome. Yeah, like that watch just like expanding over like almost half of his arm. Or the yeah, it's like half a of his arm. now. Yeah, it's so cool. Do you guys have anything else to say in this episode? Uh, well, I, 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 I've always liked those concepts where you, you get these characters, especially uh, child protagonists, and they get to see what their future selves are like. I've always found that to be a really good concept. Yeah, because it has, it has a lot of, like, potential, like, with things. Like, even whether it be, like, some, like, you look at the standpoint going, oh, you've taken these characters from here and put them there, and it makes sense for them to be an adult. You wouldn't predict that, but it makes a lot of sense. Like, you'd see something in, like, the book of It. Yeah, yeah. Or, like, yeah, the book It with, like, that contrast comparison. Or something like, um... Like, and there's some very interesting, like, character dynamics you can have with, like, the young person in comparison to the adult. Like in here, where, like, Ben wants just that ultimate control. He, he never has to be Ben. And in the reality where he does, he just is kind of an arsehole. <laughs> yeah. But it's also interesting because I think, like, even though Ben went through this and he saw what his older self is going to be like, he's still going to do that. I think he's still going to become an asshole for a while. <laughs> and that <clears throat> is true. But again, like, a thing that Ben 10 does, and I think it's really cool for doing it, is that every time we see the feature, it's different. And the reason we see it, it's different is because Ben keeps seeing his future, and because yeah. of that, the future keeps changing. Even though later in the series, there are still a few episodes canon with this timeline. If we don't have I, anything else to the, yeah, Sorry, you go. I have a couple of other things. First thing, I want to know how Max lost his arm, because he has a robot arm now, and I'm wondering what the hell happened there. Oh yeah, that's right, he did. That's another thing that's kind of canon, like, that a concept of it's like that's a even though, no matter what feature it is it's like a common consistency that max loses his arm something tells me that had something to do with vilgax and that's why he's completely torn to pieces <laughs> maybe but i know that there's an omniverse episode which i really like was like uh, the two part of them we, uh, was like and then there were none and then there was ben which is uh, like uh, Vilgax is a time bomb. He wipes out every other universe except for the universe where Ben, the only universe where Ben doesn't have the Omnitrix. But in that episode, in, like Grandpa is still missing an arm. He has a prosthetic one, and it's just a constant. And, and, and the, it's confirmed that he was still a plumber. This is Ben never had the Omnitrix. But like, it's just a, it's just a constant that is just like, I'm, like I appreciate that show that you've kept that constant of like that singular thing. I just think it's really cool. There's one last thing though, and this is more of a thing on the whole season. Mm. I don't like how overloaded Gwen has become. Like, in season two, she started doing stuff because, like, she got the lucky girl powers and had, like, decent gymnastics and also sort of magic. Now she's just a flat out ninja out of nowhere. And then future Gwen also has all the charms from Hex that she destroyed earlier. So, like, how did those get here? And also, why is child Gwen, like, just actually a ninja now. I will agree on the point of like child, like she's a, she just kind of like she just starts kicking, like um like she kicks like Animo, and I'm like that's a bit. I don't know if that's gonna work, based on the fact that you know last season you were kicking when you were possessed by Ghost Freak, and you just you weren't doing anything to forearms, so I don't know why you'd be doing something to Animo. But all mm. right. Like, I, I do kind of agree on that point. That's a bit of just like a, and this has happened now. But, like, yeah. on the charm point, it's magic. What? There are no rules. The end is clearly just magic. She could have been to She They could be like, it could, they could be like uh, some form of like Infinity Stone thing. But instead of like having them go six across the entire galaxy, it's like, uh, no, it's like six on every planet. So she could just duck around to another planet, grab the six, and go, awesome, we got the powers. Uh, episode two, Midnight Madness. This is the the I don't like and boy, I don't like this episode. Yeah, I thought this one was kind of meh, but there is one thing I really liked about it, and this is another thing the se whole season kind of did. They made upgrade a lot more prevalent, and he actually is a lot cooler now than he was before. 
Yeah, that that's yeah. fair. He, the upgrades he used it, I'm like, oh, cool, upgrades here. But yeah, overall, I just wasn't a fan of this episode. I just like when he took over the helicopter and it just became like freaking, I don't even know, just like a massive war machine in the air. <laughs> it just became Started better. shooting everything. Like, it, like, I just like the scene where, like, the propeller, because, like, like it, it silences itself because it's literally being upgraded to, like, a more efficient version. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's clever. I like that. Yeah, I don't have much to say about this one. Villain kind of sucks. Much now. It's just a small guy. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I guess he has a magic watch. Cool, I guess. I don't know. I don't really care. I'm like, I remember as a kid not really liking this episode, but seeing it a lot, and I'm still like, I don't really like this episode. I mean, there's like some. That I just like that this universe has like everyone just has laser guns, like yeah. the cops and stuff. Like, I think that's just, just like, how they draw bullets to like get away with having guns. Well, obviously, yeah. Like, obviously, from a meta standpoint, it's like, yeah, they have to have lasers so they can't because they can't just use actual guns. But I just like the thing in this universe. We progressed at a point. Well, we don't need bullets, we just have laser guns. So everyone has, like, like, if you buy a gun, it's just laser guns. There's no just, like, regular, like, bullets and pistols. It's always laser guns. I just think that's a kind of neat thing. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, I don't have much notes. I just have the line in, like, halt in the name of mole security, but I don't know what that's preferring to. Oh yeah, that, that no, that's just what the mole gods say anytime someone's doing something. They just say, yeah. in the name of mole security. And I'm like, alright. <laughs> Funny, mm -hmm. I guess. Oh, there was yeah. one other thing, though. So the first people that are hypnotized by the bad guy, and that are, like, seen, they are some of the same elder people from, like, the Aunt Vera episode back in season one that were taken over by the, like, body snatchers. Those were the same old people, so they just get in all kinds of trouble. <laughs> Poor old people. And also, at the end of that episode, it was a bit of a downer ending, because like, oh, Ben saved the day, but the aliens are still kind of there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my canon is that those people are... S the reason they could do all the backflips and stuff is because they're the aliens. Yeah. Episode 3, A Change of Face. This is the body swap episode of the series. Oh, God, the body swap episode. I didn't mind this one. I, I I had a fun time with it. I mean, there's like body swap episodes are pretty generic in most senses, so I feel like you can't really go wrong with it. I, I like that this one kind of like the, the whole premise is like I'm gonna swap with Ben and have the Omnitrix. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> like it's a bit of like yeah. a, oh whoops, and then they keep going. I first noticed like Salem, which I saw what you did there. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, I, I get the drift. I, I get what you're trying to do. I, I see what you're putting down, Ben Ten. Yeah, but I just remember reading that book we had to do in English that I already forgot the name of. The Crucible. That one, and like just reading that, and then it's like they're just dressing up as pilgrims, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's not a good thing to dress <laughs> it's up. It's like as. that's not okay. Jesus Christ, Max, <laughs> you should know yeah. better. The kids, they, they just don't want to do it, but like. Look, even Gwen should know better, actually, since she's always on her fandangled computer device learning everything about everyone. Yeah, I think this episode just exists because it's the way to explain <laughs> Gwen getting magic. Like, that's also, all yeah, it really is. That's fair. And it's got some good stuff in it, but, it, it's, but like, one thing is I noticed, I'm like, so Stinkfly starts putting out fire with his stink, but I'm like, hang on a second. In the episode oh, yeah, I remember that. Where, where um, Kevin Levin and Ben are teaming up, he says the stink is flammable. Ooh, no. Continuity. <laughs> so I'm like... Yeah. I think he actually used it to put out fire in previous episodes as well, though. Yeah. So I'm like, that... How does that... Is it just because the stink's going on top of the fire? But if you I put think the fire on top of the stink... Different. It's probably a different kind of fire. Is well, I mean, he was talking about magic fire, wasn't he? Um, yeah. I guess like, I think it's, it's, it's alien it's fire, so that's different. But he can absorb regular fire. I don't know. I don't know. Also, a Diamond Head's in this episode, and he's pretty good. I like him. Oh, yeah, I like his <laughs> diamond slides. Oh, yeah, that was so much. That was so cool to watch. Like, he was just sliding around the buildings, <laughs> trying to improvise his way there. <laughs> and also, him trying to hop on like the Segway, and it just, it just breaks under the pressure. And. I was a bit like, I hope that, because I didn't remember this episode too much, I'm like, I hope they don't do the thing. It's like, no, so they, we don't notice that Gwen is a bit crazy. Like, she's acting different. 
And then I like that Ben's like, hang on a second, something is off. What's all this? Yeah, because especially when Gwen was like, so how does the Omnitrix work? But Ben was like, like, you already know. So. He's like, you already, <laughs> you already understand all this. And and then like when she's like, oh, sorry, it's my fault. And, and then Ben walks away going, see, she's gone crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something's up with her. And then Max is like, I like the way you, like, she's going around collecting all these materials. And he's like, oh, you must have... You're getting your tastes from your grandfather, then. <laughs> but, like, I like that um, they, they solve that issue, like, relatively quickly. Like, it's not like a drawn-out thing. It's like, oh, when's he gonna work out? It's like, okay, Ben already has, he's like, what's all this? He's a bit, like, I don't, I can't really prove anything. And he sees Charmcaster, Charmcaster's like, no, we're, I'm Gwen. And then she steps something, and she's like, nah, and Max and Ben are like, yeah, no, that's Gwen. And then <laughs> Charmcaster just, again, swaps the two. <laughs> Which is funny. Yeah. It's like, ah, oh, damn it! And then, like, that's that's enough. Like, uh, that's a bit like that's a bit awkward. But you have they work together, and then the day is saved. I don't know. Mm, yeah. It's fine. My only other note is like getting uh, because I think uh, Charmcaster gets hit in the head with a cannonball. Oh yeah. I think it's hit with several. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, getting hit in the head with a cannonball would literally kill you. I feel like uh, that, that is what they design. <laughs> Episode 4, Merry Christmas. I have one note for this one. And then it's, uh, this one is, oh, no, it's like, uh, why, do, why doesn't Ben and Gwen know what skedaddle is? Because they're oh, too yeah. hip. People know the word skedaddle, though. Yeah. I don't know, that's the only thing I have written down. I'm like, this is a, this is a weird Christmas one. Yeah, it was really weird. <laughs> It's a Christmas special, that's all it is. It doesn't have anything special. Has a bit of that body horror element to it, so you know, always continuing the Ben 10 theme of body horror. Yeah, it's one of the later episodes that has proper body horror. Ah, uh, yeah. But like, this is, this is just a little bit where like, the eyes go like, that was a bit uh, at the ears, you're like, ew. <laughs> that's a bit it's the kind of thing that would disturb a child to make them remember the episode. Because I, I, I remembered that part of the episode. <laughs> I remember it was like, yeah, they go into the place, there's the, the, the Nutcracker guards, and then they turn into elves. It was spooky. I don't remember it being spooky, I remember, like, that was weird. Well, I guess it's just yeah. kind of like a creepy concept to be, like, turned into an elf and then forced to work for the rest of your life. <laughs> Fair enough, that is terrifying. And also, well, they were, like, stuck in a time loop or something, weren't they? Well, they weren't really stuck in a time loop, it's just time was very weird. Like, he was like, oh, that photo was taken the other week. Oh, what year, when was that? Oh, 1937. And you're like, oh, no, that's before the war. Season 3, episode 5, Ben Wolf. The reason this season's memorable. Yeah, like, half the season's dedicated to classic movie monsters. But at the same time, like, I, I like these episodes sort of, and I want to like them a lot, but at the same time, I just kind of can't. Because, like, all the monsters in this series are just massive cop-outs. He turns into Ben Wolf once. Only in this episode, and there's no transformation scene. And it's the same with every other monster. No, because- well, yeah, but he te- ah, uh... Nah, you're right. And that was bugging me the entire time. This is the first episode I was like, I actually remember this being better. Yeah. yeah this, this is a- like, I watched and I was like, huh, I remember watching this as a kid. And, I don't know, it just kind of fell off. <laughs> I remember as a kid being like, oh yeah, the Ben, that was a real good episode. But now I'm like, nah, it's- it's fine, it works, but like, it's just... It could have been better. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so like, my notes of like, um, CGI Dreamcatcher. Uh, Ben's first and I think only crush of the series. Yeah, in it, this yeah, series. classic. Because later on you have um the other character, which I just, like... I think her name is Julie. Yeah. Or Judy think it's, is one of them. Like, it's his, like, crush of the series. I'm like, oh, that's kind of interesting. You know, ben doesn't really have, like, that type of storyline. But, uh, hey, it's cool. You get that one. But, uh, ben is a hero. He, he saved... He, the watch is timed out, or he can't use the watch for some reason. I think it's timed out, and then he has to go and save um, What's-Her-Face. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, cool. Ben's being a hero. That's good. My only other note is that Ben looked at the yellow on his watch and just shrugged it off, and I'm like, don't shrug that off! Yeah, yeah. that's not normal. <laughs> Come on, man! That's a very important alien technology on your wrist. Don't just shrug it off when it does something different. If he had shrugged mm. it off when it did something different, he would have died! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, God. So many times. It's mainly just here to show that, like, yes, he can easily acquire DNA of other aliens and then turn into them. I feel like that's sort of the main thing they're trying to show us here, but I yeah. think the main problem I have with all the monsters, their designs are really good. 
They look amazing. They have some good design. The problem is, they can't do shit. Yeah. The Ben Wolf has teeth, claws, and a sonic howl, which is really cool, but that's it. And he can jump. All the aliens can jump. Even Grey Matter can jump. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. I guess, like, all the aliens kind of have to be sort of weak so that, you know, because there's, uh, like, he has ten other aliens. They all sort of have different abilities, and I guess it makes up for the others' lack of ability in certain areas, but... Wait, oh, no, hang on. So, uh, Ben Wolf is strong. Uh, uh we have that as jump. Oh, we have that as forearms. Uh, we have claws. Oh, that's, um... Rip jaws. Yeah, that's rip jaws and cannonball. And kind of accelerate. That too. Uh, what else? Uh, the sonic blast? I think... That's the only unique thing. At the same time, it's just as effective as a fireball from heat blast. And the only time the sound thing comes back is Echo Echo and um, uh, yeah. Alien Force. And... I think the only reason they really did the episode was to kind of try and introduce that the Omnitrix can pick up other aliens' DNA. I don't know if they did that in Season 1 or 2, but I assume mm, no. They kind of hinted at it in Season 2 with a wild one. Yeah, they kind of hinted at it. But that was it. a bit different, because that was just like, oh, it got some DNA of like a fungus kind of plant. And now Wildvine. Who that's the other thing I do like about this season. Wildvine is in it a lot. Yeah, he's and real good in And he's well used as well. I do like Wildvine, he is cool. I like I like his like, transformation pose. This is it makes me laugh. Because <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's his face. I just really like his facial expressions. And I do like at the end of this episode, like it like the ending bit where he kinda he talks to um his crush and she's like, Oh no, I don't really like he was you. <laughs> Yeah, that was a bit weird. It was like it was a bit. It was when she. Yeah. I was like, "Oh, good message." And then she continued, and I'm like, "Oh no, this isn't what I expected. This isn't what I remember." And she was like, "No, I I liked that you were turning into a wolf. I was gonna like train you and keep you as my pet." And I was like, "That's kind of that's that's <laughs> not that's that's not okay." That's borderline kidnapping. It's either kidnapping or it's hinting at furry shit. <laughs> either way. Oh yeah, God. I think she I, she was like really into the idea of it though, which was kind of weird. Like, mm. you're 10, so maybe excuse, but still not okay. Yeah. Especially since she knew that Ben was a human. Like, it's like, the, there's something there that. No, we don't. Anyway, let's move on. Let's, let's, yeah, let's, let's, yeah. let's, let's go. Yeah. No. And then Gwen defends Ben, and I'm like, I like when Ben and Gwen are like, kind of like teaming up because. It's, they're getting past their bickering, which I just am getting sick of. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's like, they get past it, but then, like, two episodes, they're back to the it's same thing. Just... And that's one thing that annoys me in most TV shows, actually. Someone yeah. has character development. It's taken away from them, like, the next episode. Yeah, that's the only problem. Yeah, it's like... I guess that the main, like... Like, one of the reasons why, like, somehow, the like, the reboot has, like, a little bit better on that standpoint. Because... While they bicker sometimes, they are mostly on each other's side. Mm. Like, but, they're not, yeah. like... They're obviously, like, they have opposing ideologies and stuff, and they, like, disagree on things, but they're not always bickering, like in this series, where it's just constant. Some episodes are okay, some episodes don't have it that much, and they tend to be more of my favourites. Like, I don't remember in Ben 10,000 them doing that very much. Yeah. Mm. I think they do it because it is, like, a kid's show, and... Kids watch it and they have siblings and they they bicker with their siblings and whatever. I don't know something relatable for the kids. It's relatable for the kids. I don't know. Just put a werewolf in there. I don't give a crap. Kids like werewolves these days. Who knows? Yeah, but it's kind of just a build up to the end of the season. That's all. It really, really long build up. Yeah. It could be worse. It could be worse as the long. It really could be. Uh, episode six. Game over. This was a. This is a. This is probably my favorite of the season, mainly because it's the main one I remember out of the season. Same, yeah. This is my favorite, mainly Same. because it had stuff with um upgrade in it. I really, really like upgrade. Yeah, it had That's upgrade. Fair. Also, video games. Video games are cool. I've always wanted to be transported into a video game. Yeah, I also remember. The... I don't because I would die. I also remember <laughs> the Ben Ten video game of this episode, and I mainly just remember um the cannonball. Like samurai, even though he has like the least changed about him, but I always mm. remember him for some reason. I always remember that cannonball too. But I think it's because I really, I just really like the new designs and the plot is just really cool. Mm. Yeah, like it's it's cool to see like people like in different costumes or different outfits, and that was a cool example. And it, was, it had a cool plot. It was like they're trapped in a video game. They gotta got these levels. 
And they got to find the aliens' power-ups, which I'm like, that's really cool. Yeah. That was an interesting bit. I was like, oh, that makes sense, but how long is this episode going to go? So I'm glad they only did a few aliens. (laughs) (laughs) Going to go through all, I think, uh, how many at this point? I think like 13? I think he had 11 or something now. No, he had... 13. I think it's 13. No, no, it's 12. This goes for... Yeah, yeah. Sure. Because I know in the complete series, I have a... um, over the all four seasons, he get nine. He has nineteen in total, which I think maybe includes goes three. So by the end of the series, he'll have eighteen, but totally has nineteen. Yeah, he had yeah. nineteen I, again. It was like this is an like in contrast to the Ben Wolf one. Like this was pretty much as good as I remember. Yeah, yeah, this was a really good one. Mm. The only thing I found weird at the start with the basic cameos, I'm like, okay, so we the this is bullcrap. Or those enemies are really weak, or these guys have just been given like video game powers. Because Gwen kicks and punches holes clean through solid metal robots, and even then, like, elbow drops one of them and caves its head in. Yeah, I elbow drops, just like elbows down down and caves its head in. I'm like, these things are either really weak or I'm calling some shenanigans. I think that's just video game power for level one or something. Maybe. I always, well, I always heard it's like one, they're weak enemies, they're like level one enemies. Two, they're in a video game in which they both have, like, some good experience with it. Yeah, like, it, it, it just made sense. I'm like, okay, I can bypass that. They're very weak enemies, first level, they're both good at the game, so of course they're gonna wreck house. Yep. I just want to play this Sumo Slammers game, though. The only thing I don't understand, they call it Sumo Slammers, it's completely samurai-based. <laughs> yeah. The only thing sumo about is that the main protagonist is fat. Yep, that's, that's it. That like that's a, that's a, that's one of those things I just never noticed. I was like, yeah, sumo says, you know, they get the samurai. Says, Wait a second, <laughs> this doesn't quite match up. Yeah, I had another note from this episode. It's like in uh, the last fight of the episode, and uh, Ben Ben says something. I, I have it quoted. It's like for a watch, you sure have a lousy sense of timing, and that reminded me that yeah, as a kid, I always really hated the continuity with the timing of the watch like mm. it like some fights can go on for like minutes and minutes and then like the next time he transforms into an alien it's only like 10 seconds it's really weird and it always well bothered. the canon understanding of like the watch before it has a solid 10 minutes before the watch times out and in most cases we don't get to see um we don't get to see the entire fight we don't get to see actually how long it takes it's cut mm. more for television, so it's we're not going to see a ten-minute chase scene. Well, obviously, I don't expect that. That's like almost half the episode, ten minutes. But like the canon thing is like, yeah, it's ten minutes, and I think in um, oh, what was it? And I think in like the later series, like Alien Force, he doesn't have that ten-minute timer, but if he keeps changing to different aliens, he will, his like his time will get shorter. Yeah, I don't know. It just always bugged me, even as a kid. I was like. What? Episode 7. Uh, Super Alien Hero Buddy Adventures. Oh man, this episode. I do remember this one, and it's not, like, it's not amazing, but it's also not bad. But I always remember it as if it was in, like, a sea world kind of place. Mainly because, like, the colours of the area are, like, mainly, like, light blues and kind of yellows, and also, like, the water stunt show. So I always yeah. thought it happened at SeaWorld, but no, it's at, like, a Universal Studios kind of place. Which has that type of stuff, I think. I don't know. Yeah, got that SeaWorld feel. It, yeah, it does have that kind of stuff. Plus, you know, the giant globe thing there on yeah. at the end. <laughs> no, but, like, I really like the, the, um... I do enjoy this episode, but I find it funny, because... The, so you know how like, they have the, the the superhero alien buddy show in the in Ben 10 and, he, mm. and Ben hates it and I'm thinking about it and I'm looking at the designs and I'm like you know what this show reminds me of the remake yeah it's got that similar style to it like they're not I... the exact same style obviously but like yeah. it's got that element of it where I'm like this just reminds me of the remake it reminds me of superhero squad that Marvel show that from too Marvel. yeah I think that's like more akin to like that because obviously the people when they're making this episode didn't have didn't have the remake for reference, <laughs> but like I feel like it is targeting that a bit more or like like how like regular show had an episode in which they targeted the fact that their own toys were crap that they were off coloured and terrible terribly made like it feels a bit like it's one of those things you're like yeah they're making fun of that stuff and that's that's funny. 
And like it has that um, as yeah, like kangaroo the commander. Yeah, kangaroo commander, and then you have the creator of the uh, super alien hero buddy adventures. And I like that like their dynamic because it's obviously like an Adam West type, like Adam West, but less silly, more like a mix of like Adam West is Batman in like probably show production and age, but also the but like with a bit more like darker tone like other shows of the similar thing like maybe like a Lone Ranger or something like that. It feels like that type of show going up against what was of uh, the current times of then with like I guess a precursor to Teen Titans Go. Oof. Except Actually, it does look a lot like Teen Titans Go. But it is very much... It's like, it, they kind of predicted that, like, feel of, like, they, that eventually in the 2010s, most action cartoons, not all, but most, will start to turn into comedies. Like the remake for Ben 10. Like Teen Titans Go. Like uh, Thundercats Roar. Like that type of stuff. Like uh, Rise of the TMNT. Except that may be a bad example, because that one has some incredible action. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this episode had like um, it it feels different to every other Benton episode ever made. <laughs> I don't really feel that. I feel like it's just kind of a very just like when you say a Benton episode, it's something like this. It has like a lot of the themes that the show usually has, and like it's not trying to implement a new feature or something like Ben Wolf. It's not hinting towards some future plotline like all of season one leading up to Bill Gax, anything like that. It's just like a very standalone episode, but it's a good one. This is another episode I liked because Ben and Gwen weren't bickering the whole time. <laughs> yeah. They were teaming up, trying Half to the time. Them. Like, don't get me wrong, they were still bickering a bit because, like, you know, Ben was like, no, Kangaroo Commander's not the best. He can't do no wrong. And technically, he didn't. It was his twin brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I found it so stupid though how it's like, it was me, the twin brother with a mustache. <laughs> yeah, it was so weird. <laughs> It was really funny, and it was, and like, and even Ben was like, oh, episode, season one, episode 23, of course, how could I have missed that? That being said, though, like, Scottish forearms and, like, Black Rapper Heat Blast, I, I don't know. Forearms one, I can kind of get seeing something like that as Scottish. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I think, <laughs> I don't know, I don't remember when the line popped up, but it was like, can't anything be original in Hollywood? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm thinking about it being like... Uh, no, but yes, but look, it's, it's complicated. Let's have a look at the remake over here. Ah, <laughs> they do some original ideas, although it's different and maybe bad to most people who like the canon, you know, it's, it does some different stuff. Like I know in, I think season three of the remake, Kevin makes his own Omnitrix. I'm going to give that one a fat no. no I do no, not I, want like, I, I, heard, I, I know that would be your immediate response to be like, that's not how that works, and I'd agree. In this universe, that's not how that works. In the remake, it's like, hey, you have to take the ca- the canon of Teen Titans Go and Teen Titans as very different. They have the same characters, but they're very different. Yeah. yeah. And that's how I kind of take the, like, the remake. And, but again, like, you know. Uh, episode 8, Under Wraps. Weird how late this is in the season. I, w- I would have assumed it was a bit earlier in. Yeah, because, like, I have the disc here, and the order it went in, mainly the same, 1 and 2 were swapped. Um, episode 7 was meant to be the weather one, then Super Alien Hero Buddies, then Under Wraps. Yeah, no, nah, again, um, th- the one here, like, the one on, like, the Google Ben 10 Season 3, it's going by release order, so I don't know what happened in the DVD thing, but it's different. Hmm. Like, even in the in Season 4, the same thing with the DVDs, I'm like, why is it different again? Under this is the Mummy episode. Uh, oh yeah, the Mummy episode. Again, again, Ben and Gwen team up, so I'm like, yeah, that's alright. That's, that's not too bad. Hmm. So, Gwen- pro to this one, the body horror thing of when the security guard gets transformed into, like, eh? whatever eh? the hell he is. That body horror is real good. Con, the mummy kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah. The mummy is probably the worst of the monster aliens it's shown. All it can do is stretch its, like, tendrils and kind of reform itself. So it's basically just discount Wildvine. Yeah, but think about this. Uh, apart from, like, the 1999 film, the traditional idea of the mummy isn't very good. <laughs> like, it's mm-hmm. not like a... It's not like a... 
I don't know, like a zombie or a bit you or a vampire, which has like a lot of it's like fifty different abilities, or a werewolf. It's just like no, it's just a just a guy wrapped in like a thing. He's kind of a zombie, but he's got he's he's he fell into a toilet paper factory. Oh no. Yeah, but usually like mummies, they have the ability of like a cursed touch, so like they touch you and you basically disintegrate from that point and just rot. You know. So yeah. I see why they can't have that, but they could at least have something other than just he's stretchy. Def- yeah, but their cur- like their curse was the was the crystals that he was hunting. Yeah, but he could have like touched people instead of made them like I don't know exposed to it. That was yeah, weird. maybe. Look, it, it it's not it's not the great. I'm not gonna defend him. He's not great, but he is better than Hex. What do you think? Everyone except maybe the hypnotist guy is better than Hex. <laughs> yeah. you think, the mummy, I think, looks probably the best out of the monsters. I just wish he did more. Well, Ben doesn't even transform into the mummy in this episode. <laughs> yeah, no, he just doesn't. I, I was like, oh, really? Oh, all right then. Yeah, the mummy is the most poorly used out of all the new, or maybe not all of them, but out of the new monster rounds, he's the most poorly used as a villain and as an alien. That's fair enough. Um, I like that. (laughs) I I, my notes. I'm like, because there's a scene where like Ben and Gwen they just have to do so much farm work, so Ben just turns into the aliens and Gwen does like nothing. Mm. And I'm like rude. Yeah. Like I get you can't send the aliens, but you have like that uh you have that spell book you got from Charmcaster in the in the shape in the uh body swapping episode. Like come on, use some of that or something. I don't know. Just don't Did you try to use that and like something went badly wrong? I don't know. Maybe remember. I don't know. Mm. Like apart from the fact that we got like some there's some like high stakes of like, oh yeah, his plan is like the turn the like to turn everyone into this like weird body horror creature, which is spooky, and you're like, Yeah, that is spooky. Like, outside of that, I'm like, cool, we've got a diamond hair transformation. I always like seeing that. It's always cool. That's it, one of the things that annoyed me, though. I think there were, like, four transformations this entire series, and two of them were diamond head. But yeah. diamond head is my favorite, so I'm not complaining diamond about the cool, diamond they have, head. Stuff. Actually, no, I think they have five, because I know... No, no, wait, there's more. I'm thinking. I know there's a forearms <laughs> one, a cannibal one, there's two diamond head ones, there's a wild vine one, I think an accelerate one. So I think there's a heap last one, but I think that's it. Yeah, I can't remember what the transformations were. I just remember the fact, like, it, the thing that always bugs me with, like, Accelerate's one, is that it starts out the exact same as Forearm. Yeah, but it also starts out the same as Wild Mutt. A lot of them have the thing of, like, the arm just turning wrinkly. Okay, well, he hasn't turned into Wild Mutt in a while, so I haven't really been... Yeah, like, he used Wild Mutt, like, once. Which is in Midnight Madness at the beginning. Wait. Actually, no, he uses it three times. Midnight Madness, the Christmas one, and then there's a gag in the last episode. Yeah. And that's it. Oh yeah, that's true, that's true. Rick Jaws, as expected, <laughs> literally not even used once. Was he actually even, genuinely even not used the, at all? He got name dropped once because he wanted to turn into a watch didn't work, so he got something else. Rick Jaws was literally never used the entire season. I laughed at that. Cause he's like, alright, oh, Rip Jaws, oh what? And I'm like, oh come on, that's just a tease. Yeah. yeah. Everyone else I'm pretty sure is used. I don't have much to say on this episode. I'm like, yeah, it, it happened, it was alright. Yeah. I feel like it may have been a bit better than the Ben Wolf one, maybe. I but... don't think it was better, but at the same time it was again just like reinforcing the things that Ben Wolf did. It's like, you can get new aliens now, and also there's something coming. Ooh, spooky. Mm. Spookums. Is that something is that thing that's coming around gonna be a good episode? No. Uh, it's a two-parter. Bad yeah. two-parter. Uh, episode nine, the unnaturals. This was a weird episode. I like it, but it's a weird one. Is this the baseball one? one? Yeah, this is the baseball oh, one. God. Yeah, this is another weird one that kind of goes from zero to one hundred. It's like, oh, Ben's little league team made it to the finals. Also, president's gonna get assassinated. Whoa! That came out of nowhere. <laughs> Oh, okay. I, because the, so the most of the series, he's fighting like either like a, someone like Doctor Animo, or like the hypnotist. But then other times he's fighting aliens. But this time it's just full on robots. I mean, he sometimes yeah. fights robots. Yeah, but like, but yeah, but, sure, but they're from Vilgax. He's like yeah, legitimately robots. human robots who are made 
by the Forever Knights as the reveal at the end of the episode. Oh but yeah, I forgot about that. You always do, you do How forget that about that. Live? And I need to Google his name because I swear to God it's going to drive me crazy. So you keep forgetting him. It's just an E. Maybe there's an R in there. Oh yeah, so that's right. Sir, that's not Ben Ten. That's freaking not. Ultimate alien or something. Who the hell is Sir King Cyrus? Shut up. I know King King George. He was like a guy who started the yeah. Forever Knights. Sir George deceased Enoch. That was it. Enoch. 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 One. That is true. How did he survive the last? I guess I don't know. He has armor. He can survive a. No, I don't think he can. <laughs> no, fair point. He should have died. I'm just reading from like the names of the leaders of the Forever Knights. So there's Sir George, the founder and true yeah. leader. He is dead. Yeah. No, he's alive. Oh, he dies he says, later. Says yeah, he dies in Ultimate Alien. Well, that sucks for him. Because there's Driscoll, there's because Patrick, of a giant Patrick, Urian, Enoch, Sir Cyrus, Argit. Joseph Chadwick. Who are these people? Well, we'll find out when we continue watching the series. I only know the Forever founder. Ninja. Forever Ninja. <laughs> I remember <laughs> Forever Ninja because. All right, I'm that... going to stop reading this because otherwise I'm just going that, to get upset. So... That's yeah, season four. Right. Forever Ninja season four, I think. <laughs> Wait, it's in this series? Yeah, season four, Forever Ninja. All right, you keep talking. I'm going to look through the synopsis of these episodes. So. Yeah, so it turns into Grey Matter a lot. Like ever since mm -hmm. episode five of season one, in which he's like, "No, you're an, like," he was like, "No, you're an idiot. You use your alien to an advantage." He uses Grey Matter so much. And even like his mistake he hits the watches where he just slams the watch down. He's like, yeah. "Why?" It always ends up like Grey Matter most of the time. Like sometimes it's not, but like pretty much most of the time he stuffs up when he changes his alien. It's most of the time Grey Matter. Sometimes it's good with like an upgrade, but it's just like Grey Matter so much. Yeah, I don't really care much for Grey Matter. He's, he's fine, he's not bad. He's but useful like, and he's, he's small, he can hide really easy, but... he got big brain and tiny... Yeah. And then this is another episode where it's like, Ah, oh, Gwen uses technology to find out a bunch of information, whoa! And so you're like, okay, good to know, but yeah. So, the president is going to be attacked by these robots who are posing as a Little League team because we know the president loves Little League. And this is around 2006, so this is, um, this is George W. Bush era. <laughs> so I'm like, you know what? That's, like, I get that the prince is like, I want to see a Little League team play. I love Little League, so I'm going to go and sit and watch and, play and watch this game of Little League. Good. But then, like, the, the robot's plan is to kidnap the president and then put their own robot in as the president's replacement. That's not a bad plan. It seems to make sense. It's a reasonable plan. It could work. The only problem I see with that plan is like, oh, then the president gets voted out, then what? <laughs> yeah, like immediately gets voted out. Oh, oh no. Like they have to take over the next guy, and what if he doesn't like Little League? Then what? Your whole plan's gone down the shit of robots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Forever Knights weren't very good at planning. Mm. <laughs> like, this one is like, because Ben sneaks into the area where uh, Cash and his friend with the glasses. <laughs> I just don't know his name. I think I his think... name is like JT or something. It's just like two initials. Yeah, I think it is actually. That you could, it might as well. Let's call him JT. So you have Cash and guy with the glasses named JT. Uh, <laughs> they're they're kind of they've been tied to a chair and they're like, all right, you won for some reason. We're gonna make you lose. So they scan their face, make them into robots. <laughs> Like, cool, now we're just gonna kill you. And then... And then they find out Ben's there, and so they're just like, kill! And they just start shooting at him, and you're like, Jesus Christ, like, my notes, Jesus Christ, the murder, the murder has never been higher. <laughs> yeah. Well, it they wasn't really... really shoot, they just threw baseballs that happened to punch clean through iron Steel. walls. Yeah, and you're like, Jesus Christ. What the hell are baseballs made out of? Have you ever been hit in the face with a baseball? It's... Really, no, really, really painful. This is Australia. <laughs> Cricket ball, maybe. Even then, Kyron, you don't do sports in any variety, so I don't even one, see you at. Hey, the one sport I do enjoy is cricket. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, but then he turns into Diamond Head, and I'm like, "Yay, Diamond Head!" Because I like Diamond Head. Yeah, that's the yeah. thing. That's the reason I remember the two Diamond Head transformations. They're in the two episodes after each other. And then he just wrecks house, and then saves the day again. Like he, I, I love the the banners. Like, go on without me. I'll do this, I'll save the day, and he kind of does. He, he still he lives, but 
Also, just a side note, and I noticed it a lot, and I think it was also in the Ben 10,000 one, I think. But Diamond Head has a weakness to sound, and that's kind of cool. It is. When is this? I don't know if it's in this Ben. It could be in, like, Ken 10. But, like, even in the, um, but, like, so, like something that's like a really loud noise is screaming him, and he would just start to shatter. Is that a yeah? Kind of oh, makes sense. sense. And it, it, I just I'm like I don't know if it makes sense, but I just think it's really cool. Wait, that's actually one thing I remember though. So Diamond Head, like he's learned to make like crystals out of the ground, and that's used mm. to attack people and shield and that. I'm wondering, are those like Spider-Man webs where like they eventually like degrade after like an hour or whatever, <laughs> or are they just there for good? Just there for. <laughs> They're there for good. The world's gonna get some really powerful materials they probably shouldn't have. I was just thinking about the, uh, when he was like sliding across buildings, and I was like, you know, like, are those just gonna huh. stay there? I think they are, though. But I think it's a situation in which the for wait, no, the forever has the two done to do it. Someone with power <laughs> is gonna take that and make it into armor. I was gonna say the forever knights, but then I was thinking of alien force and going like, yeah, nah, yeah. They're well, I was thinking about it, boss, and I remember one of my favorite episodes from that, which involves Kevin, and he has, like, a single shot of Diamond Head material, and then oh. he's able to, like, cut through anything. I'm like, shouldn't I just left that lying around in hindsight? Like, I don't want to spoil the episode, because it is one of my favorites. And it is, I think, one of the darkest moments. Uh, not that ep episode exactly, but there is an episode with Kevin and Diamond, and it's just like, even as a kid, I was like, holy fuck. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I was talking. I, I said that plot to my dad. And he's like, "Jesus!" And I'm like, "I know." Yeah. But like, yeah. This is this. This is a fun episode. I didn't enjoy this one. I had to have like, that big fight at the end with like the the mecha robot and stuff. And then Ben walks in and crushes the president. And he goes, oh, "Please tell oh, me yeah. that was the <laughs> fake president." Oh yeah, I did love that. That was really that was funny. I'd love to see like because I do what if episodes like the one where Ben's on trial because he accidentally crushed the real president. And again, like there was a bit where Ben as Ben was the hero, and you're like, yeah, good job, man, good time. Did you guys have anything else to say on the episode? Not really. I thought it was actually kind of one of the more basic episodes. I'm surprised we've spent as much time on it as we did. That being said, yeah. most of it was just trying to remember the Forever Night guy's name. Yeah, and getting sidetracked about the other episodes. Forever Ninja Corner. <laughs> What He's even? forever a ninja. He cannot make a career change. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. I I read through the synopsis of some of the season four episodes. I made a mistake because I saw Hex was in it. So now I'm, I don't want to do season four. <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't worry. I I because I've seen that episode. <laughs> do they make him better or is it still just Hex? Because <laughs> apparently they got turned into toddlers or babies or something, and it's... something tells me Hex still loses. <laughs> it's still just Hex. Oh god. Oh, Whatever. What's it's the next so episode? Funny. Uh, the monster weather one. Oh yeah. So my first This is another idea, kind of map. This one. is yeah, this is a meh one. It had a cool it had a few cool bits, but it was mostly meh. I was like, yeah, alright, it's bent in. I it kinda of just made me think of like uh, Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. It does. <laughs> that works really well, but yeah, that makes sense because you got the Sam, the robot who goes up in the in the atmosphere and makes weather. But, like, I liked a very basic episode. You're like, okay, cool, he does some stuff for him, he plays the guitar, that's pretty cool. Yeah. One thing I'm confused, like, I'm not really confused, it's like, why? So, you know the part where, like, accelerates on the drums with that band? Yeah. Why is that band Kiss, but also the Beatles? Yeah. They look like Kiss, but they talk exactly like the Beatles. And I'm like, this is really off-putting. Yeah, it is, it is strange. Because, like, you compare the styles of, like, those two bands, like... There's nothing in common here other than they make noise and people like it. But it's one of those weird ones, like, ah, whatever, that's strange. Alright, I guess. Mm. Like, the only thing that I have in my notes is, like, uh, people standing very still, like, in the background of, like, Grandpa going, yeah, dancing, I'm like, this, oh, in the background, yeah, people are, like, that. they're very still and not moving, and I'm like, they ran on a budget somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> we're just trying to get it done fast. That's what I'm making all the non-new transformations up to. It just Actually, ran out of budget. I wasn't a fan of this episode. It was eh. It was eh, and I've got it in my notes that says eh, and it has some neat stuff, like I really like forums playing the guitar, but I don't like the Max v. Ben episode. I don't like that. 
Like, I get the idea behind it, but it's like, dude, it's like season three, episode ten. Come on. Like, it, it just wasn't a good, like, conflict. I got mm. it and it made sense, but it just wasn't a good conflict. I just didn't like it. Also, like, my only other two notes is that Hip Blast can fly now and Paul Rip Jaws. Hip Blast was able to fly back in season one, I think. Yeah, like, but, like, th- I think from here on out was when Ben, like, you could, he just, he just did it a lot more. But well, yeah, he learned remember... true back then. The problem is he's barely gone Heat Plus since. True, I he was, was happy that like Heat Plus was the character. He is rarely used anymore. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of sucks. Cause... I didn't really like Heat Plus. He's, uh, he's one of my favorites. As of this rewatch. I really like his voice, his screaming fire. Like, I usually classify the main four out of the original aliens. Heat Plus, Wild Mutt, Four Arms, and Diamond Head. That's fair. I would maybe put Cannonbolt in. Well, I'm talking like from season one. Oh, for season one, yeah. But then, like, like yeah. All, apart from Diamond Head, those three are barely used. Like, well, Diamond Head was thought... barely used in like season one. Oh, like, he wasn't used a lot, but now he's getting a lot more use in like the later seasons. Well, the thing is, he's either not used much, or there's basically an entire episode dedicated to it. Because, like, the Bounty Hunter episode, it's pretty much all about Ben trying to learn how to use Diamond Head properly. Yeah, that was a good episode. Yeah. But also, like, apart, like, because the way on Stan, it's like a remastered version, so it's not 4x3, it's 16x9. So it was very jarring for me to go from 4x3 to 16x9. Hmm. No, the uh, vice versa. Other way around. Yeah. God damn. Yeah, so, so to go from 16x9 to 4x3, I was like, whoa, that's a difference. Hmm. I couldn't tell if anything was missing. It just looked the same, except half the screen was cut off. Episode 11, The Return. So this is the first part of the two-parter, right? Yeah. This was a lot of build-up to... Like, it was a cool premise, and it was kind of neat. It's just, they really should have done more with the monster characters. Yeah, they really should Like, Ben Wolf is in it for the first bit, then pisses off. The mummy's there a fair bit. But does nothing except stretch bandages at people. And just sort of be around ominously. Yeah. <laughs> the Frankenstein guy is probably the coolest. He's yeah. an actual good character, he does cool shit. His name is Victor, as every good character should be named. Yeah. yeah. And, he's strong. and I like how he's got like the two big Tesla coils in his back, and then he has electric powers. He's definitely the most creative out of the monster characters they added. Yeah, that's true. And he's also the one that's pretty much used the best, because Ben first turns into the mummy in this episode, like five episodes or something after he's gotten it, first turns into it now, on accident, doesn't know what to do, is fighting the werewolf, figures out like two minutes in, oh, I can stretch, and then the werewolf runs away and he never uses anything else. How could he not figure out a stretch? He watched the mummy in a fight. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, like he doesn't do anything for ages. Eventually, Lindsay can stretch, it's like, oh, cool. Kind of throws the werewolf away. That's literally all the mummy's used for. This is what I mean by, like, he's so poorly used. Because he looks awesome in mummy form, just doesn't do anything. I don't remember this, like, it, I watched it, and I'm like, this, again, one of the first few episodes where I'm like, this isn't good. Mm. This isn't as good, this isn't, like, really, a, it had a cool twist, being the reveal of, like, all these, like, like the werewolf, the mummy, and the... Frankenstein, like they're working together to bring back Ghost Freak. Yeah, I was like, when that reveal happened, I was like, oh, dude, that's cool. The episode wasn't worth it, but that's cool. Also, you learned that Ben wasn't, uh, uh, Max was an astronaut. You learned he was the first astronaut. He was going to be the first astronaut. Yeah, like, but then joined that's... the comics. Yeah, that was a little like, bit. Being an astronaut, like, not a surprise. <laughs> first astronaut. I don't know about that one. You're like, uh. Okay. Yeah, I just I wasn't a fan of Ben in this episode. He just wasn't great. Yeah, he was an asshole. I was like, oh, I guess Gwen has the spell book. She didn't really bring it out for some of the other episodes, but she has it now. I think she yeah. used that bit before. I think she brought it out maybe once before, but like. I know she definitely used it against the mummy. Yeah, but it was just like, all right, all right. I don't have much to say unless we want to move on to episode twelve. I mean, we yeah. can probably just review these two together. Yeah. Also two. not good. I didn't like this. It just wasn't a good two episodes. Yeah, it felt a little bit... It just didn't... 
it, d it didn't fit together right, in my opinion. When Ben said he was going for upgrade, he didn't even aim at the watch. He was just like, go and upgrade. He just twisted it a bit and then hit the watch. And it was like, what do you mean, gray matter? Look down just to make... I, I, now thinking about it, I'm like, yeah, he probably un like knows how many twists he has to do it before he can hit the right alien he wants. But, like, that's never addressed. He just hits the watch and goes, this isn't the one I wanted, by looking off in the distance. Yeah. It is kind of cool, though, that the villains kind of win in this one a bit. Like, they actually yeah. turn the entire planet yeah, to darkness. It's for, like, five minutes, but still. It was all right. It's kind of neat. Yeah, I think, yeah, I was just like, there's some high stakes... Uh, Frank and Ben was cool. Yeah, he was definitely the best used of the yeah. strands. That being said, I think he's one of the only ones that actually returns in future series often. Like, I know them, I, I'm pretty sure I remember seeing the mummy at some point, but I genuinely don't remember Ben turning into the werewolf again. Yeah. And I know he turns into Frank and Ben a few times. Yeah, I always remember Frank and Ben because in the Ultimate Alien intro, the last one you see in the massive lineup is Frankenben. So I always remember seeing it. So I always remember him existing. I knew Ben Wolf existed. I forgot the mummy existed, to be honest. Really? I no. remember. I did know about it. I can't, I forgot about him because he's been so poorly used. Yeah, that's fair enough. But then, like, at the end, he also gets Ghost Freak back. Never uses him. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. Yeah, he, he's Ghost Freak's back in the watch. No, fair enough, he doesn't use him again. You know what happened last time he tried to use Ghost Freak? Yeah, but he's the. these are some things that don't make sense. So he got the DNA from Ghost Freak. Then why the hell was Ghost Freak in the watch in the first place? Because he didn't get the DNA of Ghost Freak, because the Ghost Freak DNA is just a ghost. Then how did he get it this time? I don't know. There were two terrible episodes. Yeah, also, Ghost Freak gets brought back, it's like, oh cool, new recurring villain. Nah, no, dies again. Yeah, that was really disappointing. And I was like, I know he comes back in, um, in Omniverse, and that's only because they go to the planet, they go to the Halloween planet, pretty much, because you go, that's where the be that's where the wolf and the, the mummy and the Frankensteins all live, and all the ghosts, they live <laughs> on like, this one ecosystem planet, and I thought, I'm like, and with like a like a vampire alien, and a few other different types of aliens. But I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool because you know it's just not one species of alien on the planet. Yeah. It's like an ecosystem, but of like spookums. Mm. That episode concept is better than this two episodes entirely. I question is I, I have a question going. Is Ben dumb? Yes. yes. That is the easiest thing to answer. Like in most episodes, like sometimes like you're like, yeah, that's a bit of a dumb thing to do, but he's ten. And this one, like, is he just stupid? That's the thing, though. Like, he refuses to admit that he got help from the others, even when they did most yep. of the work. That is hands down why I don't like these episodes. Until they burn Ghost Freak. And then he's like, okay, fine, we're a team. Yeah. That's... Okay, I just want to say, because I watched season three a, a, a before, like, a while ago. <laughs> so all I have is, like, my memories and my notes. So, That's how I did season one and two. Yeah. But I, I've forgotten a lot of the stuff, and now I'm like, yeah, no, that's why I hated the episode, because he's like, I don't, I'm by myself, I don't need a team, and it's like, Ben, uh, yeah, are you dumb? Are you stupid? Have you not been paying attention this all this summer? Have you not been like, you teamed up with Gwen on several occasions! Grandpa Max has saved your lives on so many accounts. Anyway, episode 13, um, this is the one where... <laughs> Uh, these two kids in like, the Arctic are like, oh, let's go over, oh no, that's an alien. Yeah, yeah the opening is very John Carpenter's The mm. Thing. But like, it's a fine episode, I don't remember it being bad. I just remember Diamond Head and Heat Blaster in it, and I'm like, cool, I haven't seen Heat Blast in a while. I saw him once right. on accident, but... There are two things I hate about this episode. One, Upchuck is probably the most cucked alien in this entire season. He's yeah. introduced, used, and gone within two minutes. He had yeah. less screen time than the goddamn mummy. Yeah, and he's he the one on the movie. cover of season three. He's the one they advertise the most. And yeah. he's the least used alien. Yeah, Rip Thoughts has been used more than him, for God's sake. And he was mentioned at least once. He had and one only name. once. Yeah, and the other thing I hate, when they're fighting the big robot thing, the other character, whose name I completely forget because I don't care about them, picks up the robot and throws it directly into the rust bucket, destroying it. And then they blame Ben for it. Yeah. He, destroys the, he destroys the robot. 
And then it's like, Ben, why did you store the Rust book? And I'm like, what? It's really weird. Yeah, it was, like, this episode was fine, but it had some real dumb moments, and you're like, why was that an option? Ben, Ben again was being, I just didn't like Ben in this episode again. This new person rocks up, and he's just like, I don't like her. I think it was kind of a take on, like, step-parents sort of thing. I get it, yeah, but, like, it was, yeah, I just I mean, didn't like how it was handled, and I was like, this is dumb. It's also the first time they refer to Max of being married, and now, like, I think she's dead. I don't know. Uh, yeah, no, no, he, um, yeah, Max married, um, because you know how, like, in Alien Force, she had, like, those, like, those, uh, the alien that Gwen is related to, where she gets all the magic powers from. No, I did not watch that much of Alien Force. I'm pretty sure it was revealed, like, at least in season, t uh, whatever. Okay, so there's a reveal that Grandpa married an, or Grandpa Max married an alien. And she's like a, kind of like a, a light bit. She's like very purple with like the white eyes. It's like dark purple and goes out like brighter purple. She has like the magic disc things that Gwen has. Oh uh, yeah. And, and that's, uh, Gwen's tapping into kind of her ancestry with that magic and stuff. And she could like kind of turn into that like creature. And so, Actually, yeah, I think I remember seeing a bit of something like that, but not much. Yeah, so that's, so that was, so yeah, so that's like the grandmother which had died for unknown, we don't know. I think it might be revealed in that episode, but who knows? Haven't seen Alien Force since I was, like, a child. It was probably Vilgax. <laughs> to be fair. 90% 90, 90 chance. It could have been. Died. He could have just, like, <laughs> got a sniper rifle from space and went, <laughs> <laughs> That's very Vilgax. Because I know that, because, like, the last time when they defeated Vilgax was when Max was, like, pretty young. But there, like, there are other threats the plumbers have to go and deal with, with the rest of the, the space plumbers. But, like, so, yeah, we got to see Forearms, we got to see Heat Blast, we got to see, um, Diamond Head. Um, hey, the hoverboard is back, that's pretty Yeah, cool. it's weird they just kind of bring it back sometimes, but I like it. I was sad the Rust Bucket got destroyed, based on the fact that I, in all caps, said the Rust Bucket, no. Yeah. Yeah, they killed off one of the best yeah. characters. <laughs> I like, I'm one of my sisters, oh no, tank. Because the, the robot could, like, construct itself yeah. in other parts. And the... This episode, while it wasn't great and it was mostly fine with a few bad moments, it had one really good line, and I really like it, which was uh, which was when the alien's like, come with me, Max, let's go off into space. And then Max looks at her and looks at the ship and goes, it's a big galaxy out there, but these kids are my whole world. I was like, ah, oh, that's, so that's, that's a really good line. I gagged. You know, bros before hoes kind of thing. Really. Yeah. <laughs> Karen's like, gross. I'm I just didn't there like the people. alien character. She caused like 90% of the problems in this episode. She fucking threw the robot into a tank, into the rust bucket, destroying it, and then making it more powerful. She dropped a fucking tank on it, making it more powerful. The only thing she did good was that she unleashed Upchuck, and like, that was it. Everything else she did wrong, she kept saying the wrong thing. She kept handling everything the wrong way. I'm like, I guess... I get you're an alien, you don't understand some of our customs and that, but Jesus Christ, you're dense. <laughs> she just wanted to get a piece of uh, Grandpa Max. That's all she was there for, I'm fairly certain. No, the, the reason that she was on Earth was because she was carrying the Omnitrix to Max. Yeah, well, she got, like, awoken from her hypersleep. Captain America just sent him the, to the ice frozen before. Yeah, but by the end, her motive basically just became for Grandpa Max. Yeah, I... I I just, like, again, it's not a great episode, the only two really good things is Upchuck and that ending line, which I just, like, the whole, like, I, it's just so good, I really like that line. It's very wholesome. <laughs> <laughs> You're good there, Upchuck. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Suck it. I played myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's 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 good. Um, what do you guys think of the season? Like overall? I think overall I think... it's pretty alright, but I I don't really have anything to compare it to. I just that's have fair enough. Childhood nostalgia. Yeah. What about, you, what about you, Karen? Out of all the seasons, where would you put? Yeah. It? Well, watching it in order of the disc, it's because split into two, like the first yeah. and second half. I was a pretty big fan of the first half. The second half, I was kind of just not too keen on, because, like, it's a lot of just kind of filler episodes and also two-parter. Like, yeah, there's... You know, that's fair enough. That's very fair. Like, I don't think it's as good as the other two seasons, but it's not 
bad. It just didn't have as many good episodes because the last seasons had maybe like season two. I think are like two or three bad episodes. Season one had maybe one or two. Mm. This one, it's got like half. <laughs> yeah, like half of them are either meh to not good. There are still some good ones, but yeah, it's more again, like decent moments instead of decent episodes. Like this does have my favorite episode of the series, but this is the worst season I've seen so far. Yeah. Because the I thing would... is, season, you can tell, like, which ends are trying to focus on. Season 1, it was all, like, heat glass, forearms, diamond head, stuff like that. Season 2, I can't remember. Accelerate, Se- grey matter, yeah, cannonball. Well, cannonball wasn't actually used much at all in season 2. Uh, it was more used in season 3, to be honest. That's fair enough. Yeah, but it, yeah season but, like... 3, it mainly... The thing I like about season 3, it mainly used... Upgrade, Wild Vine, Cannonball, Stewie's Grand Matter quite a bit. Diamond Head was also used a fair bit. Yeah, it was good to see much as come back. I just liked that Wild Vine and um, Cannonball. Cannonball. Oh, yeah. and Upgrade were just used a lot more. Actually, that's one thing I forgot about the last episode. They show that Wild Vine can also just like merge into trees. Oh yeah, that was cool. Yeah, that was... Be in a tree. I'm like, all right, cool. He's got camouflage now. Nice. Like, it makes sense. He's like made out of plants. Yeah, Does like, he ever use that again? Yeah. I don't think so. They're making Wildvine like the strongest alien he has, which I'm fine with because he's probably my favorite out of them, but still. But yeah, I'd probably give this episode, this season maybe like a 5.5 out of 10, like just better than average because there were quite a few good moments and there were some good episodes like the video game one. I that, really that, like that. that. That's fair enough. Like, I think like, I'd probably... I'd, I would, I, would, I would give it a 3 out of 5 or a 6 out of 10, purely because of the video game episode, and it has my favourite episode of the series being Ben 10,000. Yeah. Apart yeah. from those two episodes, because, like, you know, like the chain, um, the Charmcast episode, that was alright, and Superhero Alien Buddies, I like those two, but the rest of them? Yeah, they kind of map. I feel like the Hypnotist one would have been better if they had the Circus Freaks in it. Yeah, you know what? It would have been... <laughs> Because they seem like the kind of people that would work with the hypnotist. I, I like, because that's that's good, that's just funny, because it's just them travelling around to, like, serving different people, because they're like, I don't know, Zombo, so you just got beat up, so we're just travelling across country. Ghost Freak just got disintegrated. Yeah, well, well there goes Ghost Freak, let's follow Actually, this guy. That is one thing that I'm finding weird, though. So the way they brought Ghost Freak back was through the mumbo-jumbo science-y bullcrap. Yes. And they also were taken, like, the clock tower of that school... Because the ectoplasm was, uh, whatever, or his remains were stuck on the walls. Yeah, I get that. So Ghost Freak was just disintegrated in space, like, a couple mu- hundred miles from the sun. How the hell do they get his ectoplasm back from that? Uh, I don't know. It's just I gone. Like a bit of a task, you know, but... I d- Maybe in the know? space shuttle they were in. As far <laughs> as I know, he doesn't appear again in this series. I don't think he does either. Like, he might appear... I, I, I don't know about... I don't... I just generally don't know about Alien Force. But he, I think... I know he definitely appears in Ult- in, on, in Omniverse, but I have no idea about Alien Force. I Alien. think he might be in Alien Force. Like, he's probably in, like, either Alien Force or Ultimate, or Ultimate Alien for an episode. I just want to know, does Ben ever use Ghost Freak again in Season 4? Because something tells me he, like, got it, but he's never going to use it. I don't he's remember him. I don't... Them. Even though, because I, I have watched season four, I just don't remember. I don't think he does, otherwise I would have written a note down. So that's um, the thing, he got five new aliens in this, he's probably going to use one of them, which is Alpha Chuck. Yeah. He's not going to touch the other four. <laughs> I think he turns into Franken-Ben once, maybe yeah. I could be I, misremembering. I think he turns yeah. into Franken-Ben once, nothing else. But yeah, he doesn't. Yeah, I, I, I think that's, I don't have anything else to say, really. Like, it, it just wasn't a great season. A mediocre experience. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't have anything to compare it to, and I really only kind of enjoyed most of it because of childhood nostalgia. Hey, I remember watching this episode. But, yeah, no, it was it was, it was was pretty average. Yeah, I guess on that note, um, Eric, where could people find you on the interweb? Well, you can find me on YouTube. Uh, I don't post videos often. I will, eventually. Kyron, uh, can, where can people find you? Currently under my desk, because I was Something that flew off and I can't find it. Nice. Cool, cool. Um, just gotta find the uh, the place that Karen is under his desk. Yeah, you just gotta find his desk. He'll be right there. He'll be there. <laughs> he won't move. 
85% of the time is spent at this desk. That's where he lives. He sleeps there. Pretty for me, as always, it's uh, God, uh, goddamn wor- at Goddamn Robots on Twitter, uh, What's His Face on Letterboxd, I'm here on this YouTube channel, and on my podcast, the Who Brought the Popcorn one. Yep, that's the ticket. Uh, you can find me in those in those places, and uh, that's about it for this episode. Nice. And we're clear. All right.